Okay, my friends, Roger Spur one more time, and I am going to be talking about dark matter and black holes and where they are in space, and they can also be created in a vacuum chamber in zero gravity. The Russians did it. I sent this to the Russians at the National Institute, at their Academy for Sciences and Fermilab at the same time, and Fermilab responded by saying, no, that's not a black hole. I disagree, so let's let's say that that is a, I'm going to say it's a, da a black hole. If they can make any other determination, I'd like to tell you why. And I don't think they understand what a black, how a black hole works. I know it sounds very arrogant, but it's true. Okay, this is the experiment they did in space. And I'm going to show you the black hole in, in about uh, less than a minute. Plasma in space experiment, English subtitles. These are the Russians. Now, this is absolute ecology and here what they did was they took a vacuum chamber in zero gravity because it's out in space and there's nothing inside of it they've put in this plasma which is these charged particles and then they injected these little dust particles which are the little white bits now watch what happens and then they sent the information down to earth and the guys flipped out let's go back here just a smidge all right. So everything else that's been happening in this black bucket, they sent down to Earth to see. All right. Now, but instead of seeing like a clean lattice of particles pushing each other away from each other, creating this, they found it created this void in the middle. All right. So, all right, they contacted. Boom! There it is. It just pow it popped up like that. Now, it's much brighter around this and then it trails off but I know what's going on here and I'm going to explain to you exactly why this hole is here and that's not a hole there's there's mass inside of here it's pushing out but it's actually pulling in it's pulling the white particles in and it's forming this attractive mass in the center which we call dark matter it literally is dark matter and they sent the stuff to the guys on Earth, and they freaked out. They couldn't figure out what's going on. One of the guys in the science, Max Planck Institute, locked himself in his office for several weeks because he freaked out. He had no idea why that would happen, that little round, bouncing little spot would occur. And um, I do understand it, and you will too. What it is is the particles we could see in my experiments where the black could separate from the white. In outer space, the black congeals in the center and tries to pull all the white into it, in this particular case where it's all plasma. Now that's not going to happen out in the gases of space because they have already formed their little lattice works or whatever they're going to do out there. They're not creating black holes until they scrub in a circle so hard against other white particles that it forces those particles to push their black matter to the center. That is a star galaxy type of black hole where it just keeps scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing through the universe and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter as it scrubs and that forces the, the black particles, the dark matter, to the center and the white particles are outside engaging with all the other white particles that exist in the universe, which is the plasma of space, which is dark matter in space. The 80%, 85%, whatever they say is out there that they never knew about. Well, we're scrubbing through that. So that is heating all of the outside of our envelope of space on Earth, because there is no vacuum in space. So we're scrubbing through those particles we never knew were there. And that is heating our external 2700 degrees or more at the very outside. It's called the ionosphere because it's loaded with these ions. And the other ions are coming at us in the form of sunlight and all kinds of particles of dust and so forth. And we have to scrub through those. Our atmosphere is semi-locked to our surface and it is scrubbing through just like a tire on a pavement. And it's getting hotter and hotter and the tire is blowing up bigger and bigger. And the bigger it gets, the hotter it scrubs. And we're dead in all kind of violence and hurricanes and tornadoes, this is lightning and all that stuff is exactly what you would expect and exactly is what we are. 
All right, I'm going to leave it at this for now. You have no idea how simple this is to harvest free energy and just carry it out and put it in the woods and just plug your, your cabin into it, whatever you want. No grid, no nothing. This is as simple as it gets, and here's as simple as you can possibly imagine. A, just a little shoebox, basically, would power anybody's house very easily. And these could be made for less than probably 50 bucks to power a house, a car, anything. Simple as that. And you'd never even have to pull over to get electricity. Once you started your, your car up, that's it. It would provide its own electricity. And you might have a little bit of a battery backup to keep you going for a while. But you really wouldn't even need a whole lot of batteries because it would provide so much energy. You could even have two or three of these in there in case one of them broke, another one would just take over. They're very inexpensive, very powerful, and um, clean energy. No worry about excited, exploding, or any of that stuff. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna do a whole another series of discussions. Hopefully, Don Lincoln will will um, engage. And, and I did get this response from him. I sent to the National Academy of Science over there in uh, Russia and some other friends and NASA and so forth about this black hole. And he responded and says, "You need to use the quotes black hole around it, like." because it's not really a true black hole. I disagree with that. It's not a spinning black hole. And and I'm going to go in as deep as I can about the reason black holes form. They don't form strictly because of, of spinning. They form because of being pushed in zero restraints. I'm not going to say, zero, you know, in zero gravity, basically. They can form a crush against themselves if they are in a container. And the container is nothing more than the space they're spinning in because it's it's loaded with with like soup and it's spinning in that soup. So that's that container. The Russians, when they did it, they had their own vacuum chamber, which was a container. We're going to get into this, but I, I need to speak with Don Lincoln if we could, because I honestly think we could have free energy very, very quickly. And I think they're missing a few little things. And, you know, I understand why. But, you know, I was really thrilled to hear from him. I hope I hear back, but I haven't. It's only been a couple of days, so hopefully we will. Okay, so as you know, I have a little discrepancy with what Don Lincoln's saying about light and particles and dark matter and everything. So, I, and I can prove with 100% absolute undeniable certainty that what he is about to say is not correct. So if he can stand in front of me and say, no, 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 Roger, here's the reason, and that's what I want. And we're going to have a, a interactive online forum uh, very shortly. Uh, and and that I would love to have people like him engage, and I hope they will. Now, here's what he has to say, and this is about quantum mechanics and the double slit experiment. We did the same experiment, only we used a single slit. So he's going to be totally wrong, and I'll show you why he's wrong. Here goes. This is what he has to say. I'll let him make his statements, then we'll go back through them a bit at a time. Back in 1801, by British polymath Thomas Young. His work showed that light acts like a wave, and countless physics students reproduce his experiment each year in introductory laboratories. So what happens if there is only one slit, not two? In that case, there's no interference. This stems from the fact that light has only one source. And if you have some physics training, you'll realize that I'm ignoring diffraction here. It just simplifies the discussion, and this whole thing is complicated enough that we need as much simplification as possible. Okay, to recap, with light we can have one slit or two. If we have one slit, we don't have bands of light on a distant screen. If we have two slits, we do. This pretty much proves that light is a wave. Now let's start talking about tricky stuff. We know from other experiments that light is also a particle and that particles of light are called photons. That is its own mind-blowing thing because waves and particles seem to be so different, but let's just accept this fact. Proving it would require... Well, actually, it's gotten to the point of nonsensicalness. Nonsense now. Because, you know, he's saying, well, let's just skip this. Let's just forget about that. It's too complicated. I'm not going to... There's nothing complicated here at all. So let's just stop it right here. And I am going to do a whole other presentation discussing against Don Lincoln as if he was standing in front of me. And I will respond to each one of his statements. Then he can respond to mine. I think that's fair. All right, I love you all. God bless you, and um, let's see if we can figure this out. Find ourselves a little dark matter.
Okay, when they talk about wave particle duality, that's correct. It's a wave that's created by the particle free moving through the air, and it's spinning. So when you look at it, it looks like a wave. And the faster the spin, the more angular momentum, the more smash, which more, more energetic value. The longer the spin, sort of slow, the impact value is less, so you get down in the red range. Now, what you have here is, this is a pulse of a particle. So this is particle, 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 particle. Well, as it comes through the air, it has a field around it, a magnetic field. So what does it do? All of these guys have magnetic fields too. Every, everything has a little bit of a magnetic field. And if you get down to the cashmere effect, you'll find out that any particle that goes up against any other particle, I don't care what it is, it will push each other away when they get down to that very, very tiny interaction, which is down in the range where we're in. But because these fields are huge, actually, compared to what you would think. Around a magnetic particle, they're just absolutely enormous. And here we see, this is only a single slit, so we can see the venturi um, causing it to accelerate, and we see the particle actually leaving the wave, and I can show you the particle, and I will, I probably already have. And here it divides between the black and the white. So this is literally what you're seeing here is a red laser making these pulses pop, 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 coming out. Then the particle which was in the wave accelerates. It comes out because of a venturi. What is a venturi? It forces all of these big balls of waves, which are, are magnetic fields, to restrict themselves into this tiny little slot. And when they come out the other side, the only thing that comes out is the white. The black parts walk around. And I'll show you the black and the white attached. And I'll show you the black and the white separate. And here's where the black reattaches right here. We've got the Higgs fields, which are over here. All right? Those are the Higgs fields. If this was coming at you and you were looking at it this way, you would see these fields coming. And they happen when the white portion reattaches to the black portion and that's out at a distance from the venturi which is i don't know a certain distance i don't know exactly what it is and these are the particles when they are in motion this is the particle just as it concusses at the venturi you never see them in this configuration except for just an instant before they explode in the venturi this is something nobody has any clue about all right, once again, Don Lincoln said that all you're going to see is a dot in the center. This is a single slit, but it's a venturi. If this was as flat as a razor blade, maybe that's all you would see as a, as a tiny little dot. I don't know, but I can tell you what. I'm seeing the interference patterns, and they're not interference patterns. They are repulsion patterns, and every one of the explosive particles that creates glow pushes one away this way, this way, forward, and back. It wants to be an island on its own, and that sets up these stripes. These are spinners. Light spins. That's what I was showing you, is light spinning. And here's a, my little light particle right here. And it comes through and it spins. Sometimes it goes this way and goes off. Sometimes it comes, some other ones go this way and they go that way. But you create a drill bit, because it's a right-hand spin. And that's exactly what you see. Take your time and start to analyze these things a little better than just making all these statements. Oh, it's too hard to understand that. Just take my word for it. No. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and, and what it breaks down to is that light is the smallest bit of matter. And matter is made of light. It's literally made of electrons. And electrons are like, a, a, every atom is a ball like that. It's not one big proton. Let's say this was a hydrogen. Here's what you'd have. You would have a core in the center, which would have about 1,840 or so electrons. And one more that would want to get into that dark matter and say, let me come in and say, no, 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 we got enough now. We got enough coating that dark matter that we don't need anymore. And it says, yeah, but I want to come in. It says, no, you can't come in. So can I stay out here? And I says, all right, you can stay out there. How far away can I stay? Well, I'm going to push you at such and such an energetic value, and you're going to be attracted by such and such an energetic value. That means you're going to stay three angstrom units away from any of us. Nobody's going to let you any closer. And that's what happens. 
And then the, every 1,840 or so of these, it, it creates a zone of stability. And they ball together like what they call protons. But they're not just one gigantic proton. They're 1,839 little bits. And when you break them down into light and fission and all that, which is exactly what we did. We did actually, this is actually photonic fission on a desktop. Single slit, not a double slit. So Don Lincoln and I, I would love to engage with them on this. Now, I don't want to be disrespectful and nasty or anything. I just want to get to the end of the story. Okay, now I just want to make it clear, this is not just between me and Fermi Lab or me and the Russians or me and anybody. It should be between everybody. We need to find out what what is this all about. Can we help the Earth and create free energy using the Venturi and harvesting these electrons that are separated from their dark matter? And I think we can. So I, I'm looking for engagement from a lot of different sides, and hopefully we're going to have our platform set up within the next few days, and we're just going to start to have discussions on there about these things. And what can we do in, in every realm of science now? Because it's been a dictated environment. 